Hi, I'm Ray here, and today we're going to talk about soil health and what does it mean and what are the main components that go into making a soil healthy. I'm not going to be able to talk about everything because this is a massive, massive subject, but what are the main components that make a soil healthy and what happens if one of those components is disrupted and what does that mean to you? So, soil. Um, if I were to pull out a handful of soil into my hands, I almost analogize it to a city. Uh, actually, several cities, because it's made up of several aggregates, which, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, <clears throat> when you think about a city that we live in, I live in Toronto, and in Toronto there are roads that are going through the city, there's highways, there are apartment buildings that people live in, there are grocery supermarkets, there are municipal systems where waste gets collected and gets transported out, and then there are roads that the cars travel on, and then there are the people, the living people that live within it, and all of this is working in a symbiotic, efficient, systematic way together. And soil is exactly the same way. Soil has these structures within it, and it's got, uh, it, it has pocket holes within the soil where air flows through, where water flows through, where living or microorganisms live and flow through and shuttling food or minerals. The, the, the food of the soil are minerals and essentials and enzymes. They're getting shuttled back and forth and all of that. So the first aspect of soil is that soil retains carbon. Carbon, why? because it's the building block for almost all living systems. We have a huge aspect of carbon within our bodies. Plants have a huge aspect of carbon within their bodies. Um, animals, the same thing. So it's very important for soil, which is the skin of the earth, which produces our food, contain and retain carbon so that it can create these living things and living vegetation. So how does carbon get into the soil? Well, the first way is if an animal dies, a bird or worms or an, uh, a, a four-legged animal or, and, and the like, if they die, they'll get buried into the soil and that carbon that comes out of the animal will come into the soil. Now, this is all assuming that the soil that I'm speaking about is healthy. I'm not talking about dirt. Dirt is dead. It cannot do anything. We're talking about living soil. And I'll give you a little bit more color about what living soil really means. So carbon gets into the soil by decomposition of the examples I gave you, including leaves and uh, other vegetation. Right? That's how carbon gets in, into the soil. The second most important aspect of soil is that soil is made up of aggregates. You know that city analogy that I just gave you? Um, a handful of soil can contain many aggregates. And aggregates have two components. The one component is the living component and the other component is a non-living component. The non-living component, like buildings and apartment buildings and roads, is the structure of the soil. And it's, and it, it's sand, silt, and clay. So I almost liken it to the buildings, whether they're large or small, their roads, their waste systems. Sand, silt, and, silt, and clay make up that inorganic matter or that non-living aspect of how soil is and that helps with the structure it creates structure and those pocket holes the living matter is the organic matter or the microorganisms the living aspect of soil is made up of organic matter and microorganisms and i almost liken that to people and there's a hierarchy that goes along you know we are people we eat animals we eat plants we eat um, processed foods. In the same way, there's a hierarchy within the soil, in the microorganism uh, uh, part of the soil. And certain worms might eat certain um, other enzymes and other microorganisms. And there's like 150,000 different microorganism, uh, species of microorganisms that live in the soil. It's massive and it's so diverse, and we actually know so, so little about it. So that's what the aggregate is. 
Now, in order for this to work, there's a cycle that goes along. And in order for a city to work, like Toronto, there has to be some cycles that go along with it. What are those cycles? Well, we get food from outside farms, we get oil or natural gas coming in from outside farms to power the city. Um, carbon, I, I would almost liken it to carbon is powering the city and then this is the food that's coming in, the nutrients that are coming into the city so that people can live and then people can, um, then people have waste the, that leaves the city and so there's this natural cycle that goes on in a city in the same way there are natural cycles, there's a soil cycle that goes along and the food of the soil are minerals, so minerals are created Minerals are consumed by plants and other organisms. Minerals are created through the breakdown, naturally through the breakdown of, say, atmospheric nitrogen. So we know that plants need nitrogen and plants get nitrogen from the atmosphere. And the plants can calibrate, the, the roots of the plants and the microorganisms can calibrate how much nitrogen the plant needs and release some or take some in and the plant uses it and then whatever it, it you needs it takes whatever it doesn't it releases and so there's a natural cycle that goes on here the last most important aspect of the soil are the inputs that go into the soil now I have actually already kind of described this here but today our farming practices um, use a lot of inputs that come from humans. So the farmers and the factory farms are actually adding extra nutrients and minerals into the soil to make plants grow faster. I almost liken it to a heroin shot. If I uh, put heroin into me, I uh, injected myself with heroin, I would feel good. I'd feel good for a day, I'd feel good for two days, and then I would begin to crash. And if I kept doing that, eventually my immunity would drop and I would feel, I would get sick. It's the same with, with fertilizers. So this immunity, these extra minerals usually come in the form by our farmers um, as, and these are non-organic farmers, uh, as fertilizers. And most, the most common type of fertilizers is nat um, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And when you do that, you actually end up creating an imbalance. You actually end up feeding a certain, um, as, a, a certain group of microorganisms more and another group of or, microorganisms less. And when you create that imbalance in the soil naturally, the plants that are growing in that soil are also going to be imbalanced in terms of their nutrients. Now, if we eat that plant, we are going to have a we are going to receive imbalanced nutrients from that plant and two things can happen either that plant is not giving us enough nutrients or that plant is giving us nutrients that are not absorbable to us at the cellular level so just to kind of wrap this all up why this is important to you if any aspect of these four components of keeping soil healthy is disrupted, it could have ramifications. Actually, it does have ramifications to our health. And the evidence has shown up in the disease rates, which are at record levels, record levels around the world. Until next time.